And hello and welcome to Views from the Sidelines. It's October 6th. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. I can't believe we're already into Spooktober. It's one of my uh, favorite times of the year. And it's not because of Halloween, because I don't like Halloween. But I do like scary, scary, scary movies and things like that. So You can't just skip past saying you don't like Halloween. Like, Yes, I can. I don't like candy. I'm not a big candy person. I can understand that. We're, and I, I also, we're adults now. I also didn't like dressing up as a kid. Wow. Yeah. So, and I used to be, I mean, I used to I've be I've never super, met somebody that wasn't into Halloween. I used to be so terrified of scary movies and all that stuff uh, growing up. So, you know. So you're still afraid today is what you're saying? No, I got way over it actually and it went the opposite way. I love horror movies. Um, I like playing. Uh, so now you love horror movies, but scary you don't games, like Halloween. Yeah, but I'll tell you what I. What is I, this? I, I hate haunted houses. I won't go to a. Haunted you love house. horror movies. But you hate haunted houses, and you don't care for. Let, let's just get to the sports. That's why I, my nickname is, is the Enigma. To who? <laughs> not not here. Going forward. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Let's, yes. Let's get to we, the sports. We do have a lot of sports. Um. With it being October now, there is NBA getting ready to come back. Um, they're going to be starting their preseason. Of course, we have college football and NFL news that we're going to go over as usual. But I'm not a big uh, NBA preseason guy or preseason guy in general, as we all know. But there is a uh, player that is missing from a team that's quite important to the league. Ben Simmons is not uh, and on the Sixers right now. He has said that he wasn't going to be in training camp. He was going to try to hold out. He wants to be off the team. And so there's been a lot of drama that has ensued. And recently, Joel Embiid came out and said he's the reason uh, that there's been so much. I mean, they've tried to accommodate for him. And it, yes. he's kind of being uh, childish, per se. A baby. Yeah. A big baby. <laughs> but, I mean... It's a tricky situation. He's one of the better players in the league, but obviously he's had a lot of scrutiny for the way that he's played. And I'll be the first to say I'm one of those people that called him out um, a long time ago. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't even know what to think of it. What, what, what is your opinion on the whole situation? Well, I've seen this coming for about four years now. More like three. I won't say four. But, yeah, for about three years, I've continued to say if Ben Simmons doesn't improve as an as a scorer slash shooter, then there's no way they can reach the heights that they think they can reach or the heights they want to reach. Last year, they bring in Doc Rivers. They improve as a team during the regular season. They go into the playoffs as the number one seed. They pretty much just breeze by the Wizards. Everything's looking good. And then the Hawks series hits, and Ben Simmons becomes afraid. Mm -hmm. Afraid to shoot when it matters. Afraid to shoot when it counts. Afraid to be involved when it counts is even worse. Mm -hmm. Because on offense, in the last five minutes of games, he would just stand in a corner and watch. He, He would barely go rebound. Because if he got the ball, he knew he would get fouled, and he would have to shoot free throws. And he shot less than 35% from the free throw line, NBA record in the playoffs, absolutely terrible. He just mentally fell apart. Mm -hmm. It's unlike something we've seen from any NBA player in history where it comes to a point where a guy is afraid to shoot the ball. A professional basketball player, three-time All-Star, all-defense, the talent to be one of the greatest players of all time, and he is afraid to shoot the ball. I will say to a, a, a lower level, obviously, but we've seen it a little bit before. I, I would we've say seen, we've seen like, guys unravel in the playoffs. Like Roy Hibbert all of a sudden just lost it. Andrew Bynum, we know uh, mentally, he was a different type of head lost case. it, but still, <laughs> yeah. like I, I'm not going to say that we haven't seen it before, yeah, but maybe seen, not. We've seen this. guys unravel, but not this caliber of player. Yeah, at at the at these types of times. And when it's winning time and Joel Embiid, it's clear that he's tired and he's he's running out of gas. Mm-hmm. 
you can't step up because you're afraid to shoot. Yeah. From the free throw line and from the field overall. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, he has to go. I I don't think there's any argument about it. Well, he's already said he's going to go. He he doesn't want to play. The fans supported him till the very last minute. You can't blame them. They push for him. Listen, once you get a wide open shot under the basket and you pass it away, how do you think fans are going to react? They're still just going to pat you on the back. He has been coddled so much throughout his Especially being short in career Philly. so far. Especially in Philly where fans are brutal if you don't show up. Yeah. Fans and the organization and everybody, they have coddled him his entire basketball life. And so far in the NBA, they have done nothing but coddle him and give him all he wants. And all they wanted in return was a player that could reach the potential he has. Mm-hmm. And he won't. And after the last game of the playoffs in a press conference, he said, I am what I am and it is what it is. Yep. Which is why these offseason shooting videos mean nothing. Mm-hmm. All these jumpers he hits in the offseason mean nothing. All these training videos mean nothing. He said it and we all heard it. Mm-hmm. Not only did he mentally fall apart, but he's, accept- he's accepted the player he is. A guy that's ineffective when you need him the most. Mm-hmm. A mentally weak player. So, I don't blame Joel Embiid at all. Yeah. At all. Jimmy, he pretty much said Jimmy Butler left because of Ben, which yeah. was honestly obvious once he left. And like Joel said, they gave Ben everything he needed. They put the ball in his hands. And things still went um, bad in the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you're Ben Simmons' camp, of course you're going to defend him. And tell other teams you want him to be the face of a franchise, but these teams know what's up. There's a reason why nobody's aggressively going after him right now. Yeah. He is a 6'10 point guard that can defend at this point. Um, which is a thing, which is incredible within itself. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's almost impossible to find that. Yeah. But his value has definitely, it, it, it's definitely taken a hit. So we'll monitor it. We'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, Maybe Cade Cunningham's out right now in the preseason. Hopefully he'll get to play soon. Then maybe we'll talk about preseason. But other than that, I don't I don't care. I'll I'm talk watching, about some of the rookies. I'm watching to see Killian and Luca Garza. That's about it. I was gonna say I want to see how they look. I like to keep an eye on rookies during preseason because exactly. it is like an elevated summer league. Yeah. But other than that, I could care less. All right, moving on to college football. Of course. After the previous shaky weeks for both Michigan and Michigan State, um, they once again kind of get it done. Michigan State beat uh, Western Kentucky. Michigan beats uh, Wisconsin pretty handily. Um, However, once again, uh, Michigan's run game is a little bit stuffed. Uh, I mean, they still had a lot of success, but not like what we saw earlier in the season. Um, We did see Cade McNamara throw it a little bit more in this game, which was promising. I guess. But at the same time, all the Michigan fans that I've heard from besides Malik still want to see J.J. McCarthy. And that's what I keep hearing. So, I don't know. I know your stance is the opposite of that. But, I don't know. What what did you see from Michigan in this game? Obviously, their defense came to play, and I think that was a big factor. Um, And it's good looking forward into this weekend where they're going to play Nebraska. Um, but I don't know. Like, J.J. came in and he played pretty good. But the the problem that a lot of people had was that he threw to the lesser wide receivers that were open. But that's that's who he practices with. So, like, I don't know. What's your take on this game? So, first of all, I, I think it's hilarious. As long as Michigan can't beat Ohio State, there will always be a make-fun-of-them narrative. Mm-hmm. And they're a joke, and they're never really real. But I think it's really funny how going into this matchup, everybody was saying this is this is a must-win. Winning on the road at Wisconsin, you haven't done it in 20 years. This will be a big win for for Michigan. This is important. Then Michigan does what they need to do, and after the game, everybody's like, Wisconsin wasn't very good. You're mm-hmm. just supposed to beat them. This game means nothing. First of all, I just want to say that narrative is hilarious, how people just switched as soon as the game was over. Yeah. But 
once again, I'm happy they did what they're supposed to do. Not excited. Uh, I expect them to, even though I, I predicted them losing, because this is when things start to get sketchy usually in Michigan seasons. But um, Mike McDonald's scheme and Don Brown's schemes are so different. And it's clear that Mike McDonald's is much better for what the personnel they have is. Ojabo and Hutchinson off the edges on defense were just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They created constant pressure. David Ojabo had two and a half sacks. I think Dax Hill is far and away the best player in the secondary. They got experience, but they still need to improve talent back there. And the linebackers, they did well plugging gaps and making plays when they needed to. On offense, I give credit to Josh Gaddis for calling a decent game. I still think his goal his goal line packages are disgusting and they need to get thrown out. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely awful. Yeah. But, yeah, that flea flicker play was perfectly, was called at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Nice to get a big play on the, I can't remember if it was the first or second drive of the game, but in the first few drives to get that big play on uh, passing. McNamara was thrown behind some receivers in the in the beginning of the game. It took him a while to get into a rhythm, but once he got into it, he made some good throws, was able to get the team downfield. Jake Moody hit all his field goals, and they made big plays when they needed to. So, yeah, are happy you, with how it went. Are you with the sentiment that you – do you think that Cade McNamara plays a little too safe? Because there's a lot of people that I've heard because he – I mean – Obviously, he throws behind people and stuff like that, but he doesn't like. One argument for him is that he doesn't turn the ball over, but the argument on the other side of that is that he doesn't turn the ball over because he waits for somebody to be wide open, and he doesn't like. He doesn't press the ball. I think that's the exact reason why he's starting. Yeah, and I and think that I... also makes sense for Harbaugh to just like play it safer. I, I said this last week, I'm pretty sure. Michigan fans have wanted that stud special quarterback for so long that even a guy that's safe and doesn't turn the ball over and doesn't take bad sacks, he's good in the pocket. He knows how to evade pressure. and He's not going to turn it over. That's still not good enough for Michigan fans. Because they, they want the big time. It's obvious he's going to get us to a championship type of guy. Well, I don't even know if it's that. To to play devil's advocate here, like when if you fall down in a game, like Michigan's been like constantly in the lead, and then they can just run their running game game plan. Um, and I see it. It's funny because I see it with Lake Orion on the high school level. Um, but Cade McNamara is like if you're down in a game. Can you trust him to make big plays? And that, I think, is where the argument goes. That's it's something because, we're going to have to figure out. Right, because I, he I plays doubt, so I safe. I doubt that he's – I think at this point we all realize he's the safe, old, reliable choice. Right. He can make mostly all the throws, but he's not going to blow you away with any throw. Yeah. J, uh, JJ made that one good throw at the end and everybody lost their minds. Right. Because we haven't seen it yet with them being down and somebody having to drag them back, we have no idea. Yeah. But. And and this goes back to where when they were playing early in the season, where they should have tested their passing game. And that, that goes back to just my little my little argument about it, where, like, you could figure out if maybe J.J. could actually be the starter. But now it's, it's way too late now, in my opinion. That's exactly like, what I was about to say. People that still want J.J. to get switched in, it's too late. Yeah, if they wanted to do it, they would have done it at the start of the season, or even but, even a couple games in. I think they could have tested it, but at, at this point, yeah, it's too late. But I think that's just where their argument lies. Exactly. Like, I think a lot of Michigan fans they don't they pay somewhat a lot of attention to what like Michigan football all around, but it seems like a lot of these fans don't realize. Josh Gaddis said before the season. We are going to emphasize the running game this season, and we want to run it more than we pass. Mm-hmm. He said that before the season. Yep. And he said it because last year they were terrible running it. So 
it's going to be frustrating when he wants to keep forcing the running game, but that's what Josh Gaddis wants to do. So well, even if J.J. was playing, there wouldn't be some wild change to the game plan. Yeah. They'd still be trying to force the running game. Right. And I think people, I think for the most part, the people that I talk to, they understand that. But I think the, the bigger problem is just in those scenarios, again, when we get to bigger games, when Michigan needs to make plays with their arm, whether it's Kate or J.J., who would have been the more big play well, option? I don't J- know. J.J. is obviously the more capable option option of making those big, wild plays. Right. That can like completely swing momentum. Mm-hmm. But until they get to that point, I think they, they don't even think about it. Yeah. They, they, which it's I think, obvious. Yeah. Which I think also creates the problem is that they, because they're not thinking ahead to these bigger games where as a Michigan fan, you want to beat Michigan State and Ohio State. But if you're not putting your best available options out there, is that going to hurt those games? I don't know. I don't want to go too deep in it because we've, <laughs> we've already talked about it before. But, but. I, The last thing I'll say is I think Jim Harbaugh knows full and well that this, this team, this personnel, this talent, they are more talented than most teams in the country and most teams in the Big Ten. But from a receiver, from like receiver stand wise standpoint, and tight end, you have Eric All as a pass threat. You lost Ronnie Bell. You have Cornelius Johnson, and then a bunch of young options. Do you really just want to throw JJ out there and just say air it out and go for all things explosive? Like this, I don't think this. I think Jim Harbaugh knows, and Josh Gaddis. I think they both know this personnel isn't set up for them to go out there and play like Alabama. Or like Ole Miss, like those high flying teams with like, I, I they know what they have in in this offense and this personnel. And she yes fans want to see them dominate through passing the ball one game, but this is the team we have right now, mm-hmm. and this is how they play. They'll obviously end up losing a few games because of it, but I don't think they have the talent to just go out there and air it out like and have three different receivers go over. This is an Ohio State. Like, their second game of the season, they had three receivers go over 100 yards. But, That's not happening with Michigan right now. But you never know if, if J.J. could push those receivers to be better. I, I don't know. I, again, I don't want to go too deep in it. The passing game, just... of course, it, it could be more explosive, and there could be bigger games. But it's obviously not going to be what Michigan fans want right now. The talent still has to improve. JJ has to get that experience and in game time to get all, all those things worked out. The future is JJ McCarthy and Donovan Edwards in the backfield and those young receivers stepping up, but that's not this year. Yeah. I know Michigan fans want it. And we're going to get little sneak peeks like the Wisconsin game. Like Roman Wilson, six, six catches for 90 something yards. He had that great catch going down the sideline to go up and get a ball. Cornelius Johnson has the potential to be a number one like high level receiver, but he has to be more consistent. There are little pieces there, but it's not all there yet. Mm-hmm. So even if you like, even if you throw JJ in right now, how do you just assume it's going to go right? There's more of a chance JJ comes in and throws three interceptions. Mm-hmm. than like we know what Kate is going to do. And JJ is too much of a wild card right now. They could lose this Nebraska game. Yeah. They could. We'll it see. It looks like a trap. All right, well, let's get off Michigan because we can go for days about it. We'll go over to Michigan State. Maybe Michigan wishes they had the receivers that Michigan State has. Um, again, it's Western Kentucky. They were expected to win but had to play it safe. Um, you didn't want to let your foot off the gas. Kenneth Walker basically became – he's one of the best rushers in, in the nation. I think he's number two, uh, 126 yards on the ground, three touchdowns again in this game, just insane numbers. Michigan State hasn't seen a runner like this in forever, to be honest. Even I don't even think Le'Veon Bell had like consistency like this. Since what was what was the running back? Well, he was number 33. He was with Quinn Cook. Was his last name Langford? Jeremy Langford. Was that his name? Yeah, yeah. it was. I, I think. He he was I remember him being really or good. Romeo Langford. No, that, Romeo Langford oh. plays in the NBA. That's what I'm trying to. 
I'm getting all these Langfords. I'm not an MSU fan, so I don't remember his name exactly. But, but I I'm trying to think, him. is Jeremy Langford the basketball player? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Either way. But, yeah. Um, and then we saw Jaden Reed get another punt return touchdown. It It's almost every other game at this point. Uh, he had four receptions on 127 yards. Uh, he is obviously just bombs. Right he is, yeah, he's so electric. Uh, Jalen Naylor had eight catches for 128 yards. Um, and then, of course, Western Kentucky had almost 500 passing yards, just like we thought it would happen. Um, they just air attack the entire game. The one concerning thing in this game that I will say is, again, we saw Michigan State kind of let up in the second half, um, which, I mean, obviously isn't a huge deal, but you can't do that in bigger games. And I think that's the one concern is that Michigan State wants to keep the foot on the gas so that when they get into these bigger games, they don't have to, like, teams are more willing or more able to make a comeback. And uh, I don't know. That's, like, the only concern I would say for Michigan State right now. Um, they did what they were supposed to do, and then they have a big test again this week against Rutgers. Yeah. You got anything on that? Spartans. Outside, outside of Ohio State, I think Michigan State might have the best – um, receiver duo in the Big Ten mm-hmm. outside of Ohio State. Yeah, Jaden Reed is just a big play waiting to happen every game. Jalen Naylor is just consistent. He yeah. always finds ways ways to get open, and he has really good hands. He makes really good catches. And and Kenneth Walker is the one that sets all that up, just running the running the ball and then yeah. allowing those receivers to break free. A part of me wonders if they can keep up the pass rush. Yeah, and how how good can their defense remain as the season goes on? Because mm-hmm. I feel like most of the talent is in the in the secondary, and yeah. some of the linebackers. I I still feel like they they make more plays off of effort than talent to me on that D line, mm-hmm. and I don't think they've come up against like a real high level offensive line yet. Yeah, the one so, thing and yeah. the one thing I'll say. Michigan State's been known for that, like being an effort team over talent. Um, and that's just kind of, I mean, that's how they got it done with D'Antonio. So, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe that's kind of where we're looking at here. But, you know, it, who knows? It, again, it's hard to say. Every week I can't pinpoint exactly how good Michigan or Michigan State is. Obviously, they're undefeated. Michigan's in the top 10. Michigan State's ranked 11th now. The Big Ten is strong, but I, I don't know. It's so hard to rank these teams. Um, State has Rutgers coming up this weekend. That's going to be another tough game. Michigan going to have Nebraska on Saturday night. That's going to be a really if tough it wasn't, game. If it was a noon game, I think Michigan would probably easily handle it, noon or 3.30. But it being a primetime ABC game, Nebraska has some momentum, and they're going to be hyped for that one. Mm-hmm. And they're gaining confidence. And Rutgers is – very confident too after the short run they've had to start the season. Yep. Especially how they played against Michigan at Michigan. Right. And I mean Michigan's just looking to get to their bye week. So if they can if they can win this game, they get a week off, take some rest, and they come back against Northwestern and then it's Michigan State. So like again, this is kind of their their last big test before the Michigan State game. Um I I don't know. Michigan State, yeah, they have Indiana, but they should take care of that. And then they have a week off before they play Michigan. So they'll get a full week for that. But, again, I, I, I'm i kind of dumbfounded at where to put these teams exactly. But, again, I'm hoping they stay undefeated moving into the Michigan-Michigan State game. So hoping that they win this week. I think they should, but there might be some more to talk about after this week because – Again, two big time Big Ten matchups. Um, so we'll get to see a little bit more in depth of how these teams are looking. Um, any other notable matchups you wanted to talk about from the previous week? Um, Iowa from the top twenty five. People thought Maryland could upset Iowa, and Iowa dismantled them. It looked like it for about fourteen. Uh, five minutes into the game. Yeah, and then Talia started throwing picks, and mm-hmm. it just got out of hand. Yeah. Iowa started scoring every time they got the ball. Great win for Iowa. Big game um, this week. Penn State, Iowa. Iowa. Penn State, yeah. It's going to be a fun one. 
we'll get to see how good. Uh, more so Iowa, I think. Uh, they have a little more, more question marks, but it's a big game. Georgia destroyed Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Arkansas is still a good team, but Georgia's just that much better than everybody else. Yep. Uh, Wake Forest still undefeated. I'm loving this story. They could be like seven or eight. No. Yeah. Going they're up, they're yeah. up to nineteen. Exactly. Cincinnati. Since Cincinnati beats Notre Dame. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Notre Dame having QB problems. Honestly, put put more on them on themselves. Yeah. Because their rotations of quarterbacks during the game didn't make much sense at all. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they just they just start Drew Pine and just let him figure it out because. He's a spark every time he comes in. Yeah. Cincinnati only really has UCF somewhat on their schedule and SMU. Those are the two ones that are facing uh, their undefeated season. Exactly. And they both have flaws and they're both vulnerable. So, Mm -hmm. all Miss. Lane Kiffin was real cocky before the game. He said, get your popcorn ready. After they interviewed him, he threw his headset at the camera. And then they got blown up by Alabama. Yeah. He learn must have to, thought that Arch Manning already committed. Listen, learn, learn to be a little humble, Lane. Your time <laughs> might come one day, but not today. They didn't look bad, but yeah. Yeah. Oregon gets upset by Stanford. Good win, good win for Stanford. Um, Oklahoma, Spencer Rattler looked better. They beat Kansas State. Mm-hmm. Ohio State looks like themselves again. It is what it is. Kentucky upsets Florida. Mississippi State upsets Texas A&M. Uh, Clemson wins, but they still look kind of lost. Auburn beats LSU at LSU. Bo Nix look like Johnny Manzo 2.0. Mm-hmm. Um, UCLA gets upset by Arizona State. It's so much chaos in college football right now. Yep. And your boys. It's so much chaos. Your boys from basketball, the Aztecs, in the San top Diego 25. State. Yes, sir. <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah, everything is going out of control right now, which is makes college football so good. Every year when things get, this is looking like the craziest season since 2007. Yeah. Seeing when, Kentucky, when Kansas was in the top three for Seeing a bit. Kentucky at 16 is so weird to me. Listen, BYU is in the top 10 right now. Yeah. Things are just all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about it. Next week, midseason, I'm going to talk about things I was wrong about and things I'm right about so far. Little preview, Kenny Pickett is making me look like an idiot. <laughs> 19 touchdowns to one interception. Huh? He's playing like a god right now. Yeah, he's been average his whole career. Shouts out to Pitt. Sometimes all it takes is one year. You're not wrong. Alrighty, moving on to the NFL. Week five, here we come. Malik beat me by one pick last week, so I'm getting Listen, that's that's all that matters. I'm getting there. It's the, it's the little victories. I'm getting there. I did pick the Lions, so that was kind of my my downfall. Um, so now to be your downfall, I have sir. 36 picks correct. Malik has 45. So honestly. I mean, that's that's not terrible for either of us, to be honest. Um, is that over 16 times 4? We're doing we're a math show now? Yeah. <laughs> so we're like right around, I'm right around 50%. You're a little bit over. So not, not terrible for picks, actually. All righty. Week 4 was kind of interesting, um, but nothing crazy. I would say, uh, besides besides the two New York wins. Um, yeah. But Tennessee is, a, Tennessee is a problem. We'll get to that. Exactly. All right, week five picks. Here we go. Thursday night, actually a good matchup. Los Angeles Rams playing against the Seattle Seahawks. Rams coming off their first loss, getting dismantled by the Cardinals. Can Stafford bring it back? Or is Seattle back on track and Russell Wilson going to just cook? Hey, Joey. Yes. Can I pick first? Yes. Go right ahead. This is kind of a just a shot in the dark because it's been shown now that the, the Rams do have a few flaws. Yep. They're beatable. They Sean McVay gets a little too deep ball happy. Mm-hmm. He gets a little too confident sometimes. And when you want to air it out that much and people start to – understand what your plan is things start happening well it's to make up for lost time of not being able to do that for the last jared goff years <laughs> they had one year of jared goff playing really well but yeah things went sideways very fast but i am going to go with the seahawks and my guy russell wilson in this one last Good. week he picked up some steam 
Mm-hmm. Got a real good win against a division opponent. Yep. I trust him, especially first half of the season, Russell Wilson. It's close to flawless. Yeah. It's the second half of the season where things start to get a little weird. Yeah. But first half of the season, Russ, they're two and two. Another division opponent at home. I feel like that crowd is going to get extra hype for this one. They want to shut down the Stafford hype. Russ is going to be on his game. Those receivers are going to make some plays. Give me the Seahawks. Good. I'll take the free win. I'll take the Rams. Um, I think the Rams defense is going to come back better than they were last week. Arizona has a lot of weapons. Seattle has a good amount of weapons too, but I think Arizona's top tier in number of weapons. Um, also, Seattle's got a weird running back thing going on. Chris Carson didn't play very much, and now he's come up with a neck injury. So Alex Collins filled in. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's just it's weird. It's concerning for me. Not that you run against the Rams anyway, but we saw what Jalen Ramsey did to DK Metcalf last year. Now, I know J- Ramsey's been in a different position. He's not really shadowing this year, but still, I think the Rams will put enough pressure on Seattle and take the win. Just – a quick bit of information. You know what the matchup predictor is from, from ESPN for this game? What? 49.8% and 49.8% on both sides. Wow. A clean tie. That's cool. So Divisional matchup. So It's a toss-up for everybody. Mm-hmm. We will see what happens. All righty. The uh, first London game that we have, the New York Jets taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Why does London always what get these types of matchups? Norfest. <laughs> Well, not actually. Well, yeah, there, there hey, is some drama now. When the team is bad, Matt Ryan, he brings something out of himself. He threw, I mean, Cordell Patterson, three touchdowns. A fantasy god all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> that was a weird yeah. one. Um, and the New York Jets actually got their first win, beating the Tennessee Titans. Zach Wilson, hey, Robert Sala, we, we all overreacted the first few weeks because the Jets have been no, they're notoriously bad. awful. They are bad, but... Robert Sala showed a, a bit more than what Adam Gaze has shown the past few years. Zach Wilson got comfortable. Yeah. That offense looked manageable. Well, defense, that's, that's because the Titans. Part of it was the Titans, which we'll get to. But <laughs> Zach Wilson made some of those highlight plays people liked. Still not on the hype bandwagon, but he showed some of that talent. Mm-hmm. Good for the Jets. What do you got? I'm going with the Falcons. Okay. I just think... They're just they're just more talented. Both defenses, like Atlanta's defense, is terrible. So we'll get to see more Zach Wilson in this game. Um, but I think again, at, from a talent standpoint, I'm just going to go with the Falcons. Matt Ryan, the veteran, I think he'll be more ready for a London game. People forget that like, it's a, it's a weird thing to have to go overseas and play time time differences and all that. That's tough on a rookie and a young team. So I think the Falcons just will be more ready for this game. I feel so bad for Falcons fans at this point. That that loss they had against the football team last week was such a Falcons loss. Just losing it in the last few minutes. Yeah. I think they get back this week too. Yeah. Matt Ryan, like you said, he won't be phased by the time difference. He'll probably be a little excited by the London crowd. Mm-hmm. The, the, the receivers will make some plays. Falcons might get a little bit of pressure on Zach Wilson. Might not be. Actually, it might be a high-scoring game. Yeah, might be a little exciting. Be. I think yeah. it could be. They'll, they'll give the London fans a show, but Matt Ryan prevails in the end. Yeah. Detroit, Minnesota. Detroit got carved up by the Bears last week, mostly due to the running game, and the Bears did lose David Montgomery in that game. The Vikings had a really boring loss, lost to the Cleveland Browns, just an ugly game, seven to fourteen. Kirk Cousins actually finally looked like a back-to-normal Kirk Cousins. He was looking kind of crazy for a little while. Um, Dalvin Cook didn't get anything going, and I think this is a a get-right game for the Vikings. Unfortunately, Dalvin Cook is just going to run all over Detroit, and Detroit, I don't know what they're doing with their receivers. Like, At least we got to see Amon Ross St. Brown last week a bit. Um, To me, that's all that matters in the receiving court. Yeah, but they gave up on DeAndre Swift last week. I felt like it it was weird. It it was weird game planning. It was kind of the first, like, question mark for this Dan Campbell. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I can't do it. And Minnesota's too talented. They're going to come back after a a tough loss. I agree. Enough said about that. Yeah, pretty much. Green Bay at Cincinnati. Cincinnati looking good. Joe Burrow. 
Um, playing pretty well. T. Higgins is supposed to be back in this game. And then the Packers, uh, I mean, they've... They got their groove going. Yeah, they, they're, they're going now. Do I think Cincinnati can do it? No, because they don't have Joe Mixon. I think they needed to set up their run game, slow the game down to be able to compete with the Packers. They do have a better receiving core than the Packers, but they have Aaron Rodgers. Joe Burrow's still trying to figure things out. But I think this game could be close. But I'm going to go with Green Bay, unfortunately. I got to play it safe right now. Did you see Randall Cobb last week? I did. Did, did you see the, the return of the old veteran? Oh. The Green Bay man? I guess. Listen. Yeah, he's got Aaron Rodgers, so anything if he's any bit open, he's going to get the ball. I'm picking the Packers. Good call. Yeah. I think this was actually an interesting one. Denver at Pittsburgh. We saw that Denver's not as good as we knew. Like, we knew they weren't that good. Injuries are really affecting them right now. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but they got exposed slightly. Um, and Although, then, Pittsburgh... Pittsburgh. It looks like they're, yeah. They are a mess. Um, their offensive line is still god awful. Statue quarterback and a horrible O line. Yep. And they've had some injury issues. Um, Juju Smith Schuster, Claypool was out last week. I don't know if he's even going to be back this week. I think he's supposed to be. Um, but Juju might miss this week. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. Quick question Can I pick first? Go ahead. I'm going Steelers. Man, I was thinking about it. I think this is one, though, that I have to take the opposite. Even with Big Ben being a statue. Yeah. And looking older than he is. Mm -hmm. And that O-line being terrible. I still think they could be a six or seven win team. Yeah. And their defense is still solid. So Yeah. You get enough good rush on the quarterback, it'll make it hard for those. Rec the, re the receivers are probably going to have a hard time getting open anyways. Mm-hmm. That front seven is going to make it hard on that on Denver's run game, and Teddy can make deep throws, but we all know he's a safer option. Mm -hmm. He's accurate. He's not going to do crazy stuff. And I think Pittsburgh is going to. I won't say it's a get right game. Mm -hmm. It's a. I don't even know how to describe <laughs> it. A game that 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 keeps the fan base at bay a little. Yeah. And knocks off the depression for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Big Ben has a good game. Najee breaks off a few nice runs, and the defense gets pressure. Steelers win. All right. Well, I guess I'll go with the Denver Broncos. Their defense is still legit. I think they can get pressure to, uh, to Roethlisberger, so there's, there's a chance there. Um, they have two great backs in Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. And, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater has shown that he is a capable quarterback in this league. He's got plenty of good uh, receivers to throw it to, even though they have K.J. Hamler and J or J Jerry Judy Hurt. We saw Noah Fant have a really good game last week. Cortland Sutton was a little bit down last week, but they did have to play with Drew Locke for a while, and he just it wasn't on target. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Denver can win this game. Miami at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay moving on. <laughs> I've You're given right. up on the Dolphins. You're right. Um, I love the Dolphins. But with Brissett as as the quarterback and their lack of like and, trustworthy weapons, and the weird thing is, I don't know what the coaching staff is doing. As much as we trusted this coaching staff last year, like they're not giving any any handoffs to Miles Gaskin hardly. Like what what did Malcolm Brown do to show that he's anything worth anything? <laughs> like we saw the Rams try to do that last year, and they quickly went away from. Have Malcolm you seen Brown. them go deep to Jalen Waddle more than once or twice this season? No. And that's a quarterback <laughs> issue. Neither Tua or Jacoby Brissett really pushed the ball down the field very much. But have did, have they been drawing it up for that though? No, not you really. You can scheme Jalen Waddle open. No, but you can get you can get him open deep. Well, we ways. saw him with thirteen. It shouldn't be hard. We saw him thirteen targets two weeks ago, and then last week he got like three. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm just confused by the coaching staff and players and everything so tampa bay i'm not even giving you an option <laughs> new orleans at washington washington is a tough one washington's defense is nowhere near what we thought it was going to be going into yeah. the season but their offense is actually kind of figuring it out terry heineke is getting comfortable new orleans also the same way they have an offensive problem kinda. i don't know what their offense is doing and their defense is actually okay so they're like almost the opposite of washington 
where you feel like their offense should be better than their defense. And Washington, you feel like their defense should be better than their offense. You know what it looks like to me? To me, it seems like Sean Payton still wants to keep J- Jameis Winston kind of like under on, wraps. Yes. Yep. They throw one or two deep balls a game. He usually connects on one for yep. a big play. But I think he's afraid of what will happen if you let Jameis fully be Jameis. Yeah. And, and he, it, I mean, what they're doing now. Eventually, he's going to have to. Right. Because what they're doing now him. hasn't really worked out. They just lost to the Giants. Exactly. They let the Giants, they let Daniel Jones throw 400 yards. Now, I will say, when we get to it, Daniel Jones has looked pretty good. But New Orleans just, and the other thing, too, is, like, they give 26 carries to Alvin Kamara. They've, like, never done that. And then he had zero receptions. They never looked at him. So, like, they've changed the offense so much. And I don't really think they needed to. Like, I think you can, you can teach Jameis to dump it off, but then also be able to take the top off of defenses. They just haven't done that. So I'm really confused at where they're going. Do you want to pick first or you want me to pick first? I'll give you the option. You can go first. All right, I'm going to go with New Orleans. Um, and I don't really know why. I think it's mostly because of this Washington defense being as spotty as it is. And I just think that New Orleans' defense can slow down Terry McLaurin just a little bit. I don't think anybody can really slow him down fully but maybe just a little bit. Um, and I think Washington's run run game is going to struggle in this one. I still don't think Sean Payton is going to let Jameis Winston off the reins. I think he's going to keep with a somewhat conservative game plan while taking a few deep shots a game. And Washington has shown they can put up points mm-hmm. when they need to. So I'm taking Washington. Okay. Ron Rivera isn't afraid to let Taylor Heineke go. Which is crazy yeah. to say that. Mm-hmm. Philadelphia at Carolina. Two teams that, um, I mean, Carolina we thought was going to be really good. Carolina just got another player through trade. Yep. Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. Their defense is real. Uh, now, they did drop a game to the Cowboys, but the Cowboys, again, another team we'll get to, probably better than we thought would be. Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts has looked good through for 380 yards last week. Devontae Smith had a really good game, but they have no run game whatsoever. There is something strange. I'm happy you brought that up too. But there's something strange every game where Jalen Hurts will hit one or two deep balls mm-hmm. and they will come back because of a flag. Yeah. Every time he hits a deep passing play, it comes back. And I don't know why that keeps happening. Mm-hmm. And also, why won't they give Miles Sanders the ball? I don't know. They gave the ball more to Kenneth Gainwell last week. Miles Sanders has had, like, nine carries for nothing the last two weeks. I just don't understand it. I don't either. And I know their offensive line is a problem, but it's weird that they already are choosing Kenneth Gainwell to be their receiving back when Miles Sanders has been a notable receiving back uh, for the past few years. So I'm I'm very confused. Carolina is also very confusing to me. They've played really good. Sam Darnold has a historic number of rushing touchdowns. He has five in the first four games. No quarterback ever has done that. Um, so that tells you just kind of how magical their season has started. And they, they didn't look like bad in that Cowboys game. No, and they were able to stay close. It was 28-36. Exactly. Um, but we did see a little bit of ripples in their defense. They weren't able to stop Ezekiel Elliott. Again, Dallas has one of the best offensive lines, and Ezekiel Elliott's one of the best runners. But maybe there's something there. But that's not Philadelphia's game, so I, I don't know. We'll have to see how ready Stefan Gilmore is to just fit into this defense, but he could be a huge asset for this team going forward. Their defense looks scary now. Um, that being said, I do think this is going to be... No, I can't do that. I told you I gave up on Philadelphia. I have to go Carolina. I See, I almost did it. I have so much <laughs> faith in this Philly, de- this Philly team. I can't do it. I'm going Carolina. Even without McCaffrey, although McCaffrey might play this week. I have to go Carolina too. Uh, unless until they break that weird curse of hitting big plays and they come back, yeah, and they, they have figure to get, out their run game. They have to get one to stick. They have to figure out the run game. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of things they're still figuring it out. And Devontae Smith had a really good game last mm-hmm. week, a really good game. Yep. But yeah, they're still figuring out a ton, and Carolina al- already has most of their stuff figured out. So I'm going Carolina. 
Alrighty. Tennessee at Jacksonville. Is Tennessee going to let another team get their first win? Listen, I, I got to take Tennessee I, in this one. I'm I don't Tennessee. know if A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are going to be back. It looks like they're supposed to be. They cannot lose to the Jaguars. But you never know what happens. They can't. Derrick Henry ran over, all over the Jets, and they still lost. But the problem was, I think a big problem was, late in the game for Tennessee in that Jets game, they had a chance to com- – they were trying to convert a fourth and two or something from basically the goal line. I can't remember exactly what happened. There was a chance that they could have scored. And because they had zero timeouts, there was like 40 seconds left on the clock. They decided to throw the ball on a second down. I think it was second down. So then they, they threw it, which then puts them into a – third down scenario but at that point there was like 20 seconds left or something it was weird it was a weird time management they didn't try to run the ball where if they would have tried to run the ball you'd think from two yards out that Derrick Henry would get in and even if he didn't you would still have time to reset then go for a pass but they did the opposite where they tried to do a throwing play and I don't know what happened but then the clock still ran down and then they were forced to throw because the clock was too low. Then you can't reset. I, I don't know. It just was weird play calling, weird time management. But I'm with you. I, I can't imagine Tennessee doing this again. Is this division as bad as the NFC East last year? It could turn out to be. It might not be because the NFC East last year was one of the worst divisions of all time. Yeah. But the Jaguars, the Texans... This and the Colts look like they might be the runaway winners so far. Yeah. But there's a long season left, so we'll have to see. And the Jaguars actually looked pretty good against Cincinnati. They finally have given the reins to James Robinson. Thank goodness. But we're not going to go into it, but they have had a lot of distractions off the field. Urban Meyer, baby. New England at Houston. Davis Mills has looked bad. New England. He's been thrown into it. New England looked good last week. Yeah. And they're going to be able to run the ball. New this England week. has looked good enough the first few weeks. But to me, until they take the cuffs off of um, Mac Jones, mm-hmm. I don't think they can be the team they want to be. Yeah. Chicago at Las Vegas. Justin Fields is the starter for the Bears moving forward. That's pretty cool news for Chicago fans. Um, he hasn't looked fantastic yet, um, but now at least he'll be able to develop. What if Matt Nagy goes back to Andy Dalton? Like at midseason. Then he needs to be fired. <laughs> he needs to be what fired. What if he actually does this? Um, I think people they, would call for his they are going. He's going to continue to say Andy Dalton is the quarterback of this team. Yeah, but he, he said Justin Fields. He's announced. They've announced Justin Fields is the quarterback moving forward, not just because of injuries. Okay. I, so I if he I goes back on news. it now. I didn't hear that news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's he's been – They've said that Justin Fields is. So I don't know if that means that Andy Dalton, his injury has not progressed as well as they thought it would have um, or not. But Or maybe it's just pressure, you know, to get Fields on the, on the field. Either way, I think Las Vegas is just the better team. Um, Chicago lost David Montgomery last week to, the, uh, to a, um, what was it? A knee injury? What it, I can't remember what they called it. It was like in a high, it was basically like a hyperextension, but he didn't tear his ACL and stuff. So he'll be out four to five weeks. So at least he'll be back. But Damian Williams is going to be a, a solid backup. But I think Las Vegas, I think they've shown that they they can stay in a lot of games. They didn't look as good this past Monday night, but I think they have the talent. And yeah, I'm going Vegas. I don't know why, but something in my mind tells me this could be one of the surprise. Upsets of the week. Where Justin Fields breaks out now that he's been given Where, the reins. More than that, Khalil Mack in that D-line gets pressure on Derek Carr and he makes some mistakes. Mm-hmm. Or they can't get the run game going as much as they want to. Yeah. We did see that against the Chargers. Chargers were able to stop him, slow him down. Oh, God. This is at the Raiders. You got, you got room to make risks, Malik. This is at the Raiders. Yes. That Vegas. Do I trust Justin Fields this much already? I'm sorry, no. I gotta go Raiders. I can't I can't do it yet. Maybe later in the season. Fair enough. 
Cleveland at L.A. The Chargers. Chargers looked really good. Can I pick first? On Monday night. Go ahead. There's something weird going on in Cleveland. I'm starting to lose hope in Baker Mayfield. He, he missed Odell a lot. He missed everybody a ton. <laughs> yeah. There was a play in the first half where Demetric Felton was at running back. He had a wheel route out to the sideline. Baker scrambled out. Linebacker came up to get him. Demetric Felton is wide open 10 yards ahead of the field. He describes to scramble, make a move on the linebacker, and try to get the first down himself. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's seeing. I don't know what's going through his mind during these plays. But you cannot be a high-level team when your quarterback is playing like that. And eventually it's going to come back to bite him. But for some reason, I think this week the Browns still get a win. Wow. They they have some weird mojo going right now where the defense is just dominating mm-hmm. and the run game is getting what they need. And Baker, even with his poor vision right now, is making just enough throws to get them enough time of possession yeah. to, to maintain momentum. And I don't know. I, I just – I feel like it's going to bite them later on, but right now they get another win. Like, Browns teams of the past wouldn't have this 3-1 and one start with this like type of on-and-off quarterback play. Mm-hmm. But they are so well built right now. Like, Jeremiah Wusu-Koromoa was an absolute steal. Mm-hmm. He already looks like a stud of a pick. Yep. And we said that in the draft, even. Exactly. Him and Greg Newsom, who they got from Northwestern. Mm-hmm. Everything they've done in the past few years looks like it's paying off completely. But Baker, I don't know what it is with Baker. I just don't understand. Yeah. But I think they still get a win somehow. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go with the Chargers then. I think the Chargers, they've looked good. They looked re- like Justin Herbert. John yeah. Gruden tried to throw every blitz package at Justin Herbert, and he was able to just stay composed, stay in the pocket, get the ball away. He's my dark horse MVP. And Austin Eckler had 117 yards. I think that's a career high for He's him. He's so tough. He yeah. breaks so many tackles. And, I mean, I, obviously, if you if you watch, like, his workout videos and stuff, he's insanely strong. Whenever he takes his helmet off and he has that bald head, <laughs> to me, like, it's it adds something to, like, how yeah. tough he is for some reason. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's just a good old school back. Yeah, and I think Cleveland's going to run into the problem where if they have to throw the ball, they're going to have to throw it out to Derwin James, and that's a scary sight to see, especially for the way that Baker's been playing. I think this will be a really good game. This could be a game of the week, um, so I'm excited for this one. New York Giants at Dallas. Dallas, moving on. I want to pick the Giants so bad. Come on, man. man. I am happy for Daniel Jones, though, and Saquon Barkley. They're, they're, both- one, they're one in three, and he's not the reason they're one in three. Exactly. Is that good or, or terrible? I don't know. The, the, yeah, fact, the fact that your quarterback is figuring it out. And Saquon and Barkley's team, looked better each week. And your team still isn't good. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yep. They've you, had a lot of injuries, You just got to ride though. it out. Yeah. They've had a lot of injuries. You, you probably just have to ride it out. Yeah. But <sighs> I want to pick the Giants upset. Dallas has looked special, though. I hate to say it. Like, Dallas, Dallas has, has two interceptions in every Dallas game. Dallas has looked special. And Tra- I don't know why Trayvon Diggs is just... He's he's looking like Deion Sanders right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what happened in on. his offseason. But there have been other seasons. Somebody had to remind me. I was talking to one of my friends, telling them, like, I hate how the Cowboys are looking. They look like they might be legit this year. Yeah. And my friend was like, they've looked like that like four times in the past 10 years. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'll give you they some, have looked special a few times. I'll give you a little more clarity real quick here. Alvin Kamara ran for 120 yards. On these Giants. Yes. And the Giants were able to make a crazy comeback. Scored, what, two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win the game. This week they have to go against Ezekiel Elliott, who has a better offensive line, who arguably is a better runner. And if the Giants ever take the lead, you have to deal with <sighs> Dallas's passing game. Just, just mark it down. I hate this. I just don't want you to steer too far away. <laughs> I don't want you to get too cocky. I just here. want the Cowboys to lose. That's it. I, I, I understand yeah, that. I, I get that. I'm with you. But San Francisco at Arizona. 
Just mark it down. Arizona's undefeated. They just beat the Rams. Kyler is the MVP right now. I want to take San Francisco, but San Francisco is in a a weird spot. Very. Last week, Trey Lance had to finish out the game. He looked all right. Yeah, and an early indication was he was going to play this week, but Garoppolo apparently is not as hurt as people thought. He still might sit this week, so we might get to see Trey Lance. Um. This would be the game that Arizona drops, too. That's the problem. Cardinals defense better than we all expected. Yeah, they, they definitely are. Um, Whatever. I'm taking San Francisco. Okay. I feel like I've had enough decent picks this week. You gave me the L.A. Seattle one, which was kind of L.A. favored. Yeah, I don't know. Weird one. Buffalo, Kansas City, Sunday night football. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a lot of fun. A tons of fireworks. Can I pick first? You stole my catchphrase. I don't like that, but yes, you can. I'm taking Buffalo. Okay. I think Kansas City has still shown weird issues. Uh, they've been trying to run the ball a lot more. And Buffalo's defense has been really good. I mean, obviously, I mean, Houston shutting them out is not a big deal. Shutting out Miami is not a big deal, but... I just think their defense overall has they, they, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Yes, ever since, that, out, yeah. ever since the first game against the Steelers, I think they've gotten it right. Kansas City, they look good, but I don't know. It's just been weird for them to drop a couple games this early in the season. Um, so I think Buffalo could take advantage. And then, I mean, Kansas City will be there in the end, of course, but I just think this is where Buffalo can maybe, can maybe do something. I should be a pest and pick Buffalo too. <laughs> yeah, but you could also take another ma- point. <laughs> and just try to maintain this lead I have, but I'm going to go Kansas City. Tyreek Hill had a huge game last week. Mm-hmm. He's back on track. Clyde edwards alaire has actually, outside of the fumbles, he's looked good this season. Mm-hmm. The defense has problems. But I think Pat Mahomes scores enough to keep them in the game. Yeah. Chiefs win a close one. Yeah. Something like like 38-35. Yeah. I hope this is a high-scoring affair. Uh, okay. Monday night, Indianapolis at Baltimore. Can I pick first? Sure. It's not going to change my pick. <laughs> but go ahead. Give me the Colts on the road. They go into Baltimore. I knew you were going to do that. And they beat your team. This this is a little bit of karma. You you <laughs> heard what Fig, what Fig Fangio had to say about your Ravens <laughs> and how it was a, a certain word. Yeah. Hey, they had to get the record. A man. word with a B and a S. They had to get the record. Did they? Are you sure about that? Why not? All right. Well, we'll see you Monday You won the night. game. You get to do what you want. We'll see you Monday night. <laughs> All righty. Just do you. Oh, you're not even going to say anything? Talk me up for Baltimore. Oh, okay. You're, even you're though, confident. Okay, even though Baltimore's run game is a mess right now, actually. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't no, believe in this speak, Colts team. Speak as confident as you can about the Ravens. Hype them up. Lamar yeah. Jackson. That's, That's all it? we got. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> all right. Well, Lamar Jackson yeah. and Justin Tucker, let me be fair. If it comes down to a game-winning field goal, he can listen, be fine. He had a pregame field goal from 70 last game. He's mm-hmm. a superhero. Just He can do it all. Just stop Jonathan Taylor, and I think you'll be fine. Ravens. Okay. That's going to be a fun Monday night. It is going to be hilarious. We got a bunch of games down the stretch that we disagree on, so I'm, when, I'm ready. When Carson Wentz <laughs> beats Lamar Jackson in a head-to-head matchup. Yes. I, I can't wait to, he, to just to walk in and see your face after that one. All right. This has been Views from the Sidelines. <laughs> Wrap it up, everybody. Wrap it up. We got a crazy uh, NFL week of picks. Got some big uh, college football games with Big Ten matchups. We'll see if Michigan and Michigan State can stay undefeated. And maybe Malik will watch some preseason games in the NBA, as I sure will. We'll see you guys next time. I think the Michigan-Nebraska game goes OT. Who wins an OT? We'll have to see.